In this video, uh, we're going to look at how to uh, remotely debug an Ionic application that's running on an Android device. Uh, sometime last week, I did a similar video where uh, I showed you how to do it on an iOS device, and it's pretty much the same thing with Android as well, very similar anyway. Uh, but I wanted to make this video anyway, and I figured I'd also do a little bit of uh, debugging as well, just to give you a bit of an example. So I have an application uh, which I've just created for the sake of this uh, demo here. And it just creates a list, and I'm adding 2,000 items to that list, and I'm adding some box shadows and transforms and stuff, so it's going to look pretty absurd. Um, but basically, I'm just trying to do some stuff that's going to be really bad for performance, uh, so we have something to work with when we're debugging. So before uh, you can actually debug on your Android device that's connected to your computer via a USB cable, which is what I have set up right now, uh, you need to make sure to enable uh, developer options on your Android device, and also make sure that you enable USB debugging. Uh, enabling developer options is different for different Android devices. Some devices have really weird ways of activating that, so just Google your particular Android model, and you'll find some instructions on how to do that. Uh, once you have USB debugging enabled and you have your uh, Android device connected to your computer uh, through a USB cable, you'll be able to start doing what we're about to do now. So the first thing we're going to do is actually get this running on uh, the device. So if we just run Ionic, uh, Cordova, run Android, it's going to build the application and then launch it on the device. Okay, so of course you can't see it right now, but I have this running on my Android device right now, and that's connected to my computer. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is open up the remote debugging tool so we can uh, play around with it a bit. And so, as I mentioned, this is very similar to what we did in the other video. Uh, but this time, rather than using Safari, we're going to be using uh, Chrome. So if you just open up uh, the debug in any Chrome window on your computer, I've just got the Ionic docs up here, I can just go into inspect. Uh, it doesn't matter where you do this from. And if you go to, you can see down here, I have a remote devices tab, but if you don't have that yet, you should be able to click on these little dots here and go into more tools and then go to remote devices and that will launch this tab. And so you can see I've got my Blade S6 connected here. That's the uh, Android device I'm using. So if I click on that, we can see what uh, apps are running on the device. So now I've got that uh, example application that I just launched. So if I click inspect on this now, It'll open up the remote debugging window. And now you can see what I'm actually seeing on my device in this little preview window here. Uh, this preview window isn't uh, it isn't perfect as I do stuff on the device. It doesn't really reflect here. Um, it's sort of in real time exactly. Uh, but you can kind of see what is happening a little bit through this preview window. And so obviously I've got this really wacky list right now that is just uh, tons and tons of uh, list items that say test and they've got a 20 degree transform on it. Um, and I think the the shadow's not actually being applied, but that doesn't really matter. This this is going to perform really poorly. And so we have all the usual you know, debugging tabs here. I, I talked a lot about these in the last iOS video, and for the most part, it's all the same. Um, but I did figure I would do a little bit of an example here of trying to figure out why this, um, why this application is performing so poorly, why it's so slow and janky. Uh, I know why, because I've stuffed a list full of 2,000 uh, elements with a transform on it, but... If we didn't know that, I want to show you some steps you might take to try and figure out what's happening. So obviously, as I scroll, uh, you might not be able to you know, tell on the video so much, but it does feel very poorly performing. Uh, it certainly doesn't feel smooth as I'm scrolling. So what I could do is come to this performance tab here, and we can record kind of a snapshot of performing a certain activity. And that's going to give us a sort of timeline of what is happening uh, throughout that process. And that's going to include uh, scripts that are uh, scripts that are running, uh, paint events that are occurring on the screen. Uh, so we can see these things happening and the amount of time they take, and it sort of helps identify where something might be performing uh, poorly. So if I just hit the record button now, and then I'm just going to scroll on my device. And now if I stop that, it's going to generate this data for us. We're going to be able to see the timeline of what's going on. And so this is... Uh, basically the timeline I was just talking about here. So this is the whole period, which goes for about 10 seconds of recording that I just did. Uh, so if we want to, we can just sort of take a look at a subsection of that so there's not so much data and see what's happening in that uh, space of time. 
So if we look in this section here, you can see in the input section we have the various events getting fired, touch start, touch move. Um, you can also see the, the scroll events in the main thread here. We've got the scroll event, then an update layer tree event, and this sort of just repeats over and over again here. Um, perhaps the most, uh, well actually also you can see down here the sort of breakdown of what's happening. If we highlight a period over this amount of time, you can see that it's spending most of its time rendering here. Uh, but what I think is uh, perhaps the most interesting uh, part of all this is the, the frames uh, section up here. And so it will kind of show us what uh, FPS we're achieving with this uh, particular uh, scroll we've got happening here. And so if you're not really familiar with the concept of like a frame, uh, if you think of it like a movie, you know, a movie is really just a bunch of still pictures uh, that are displayed really quickly. And if you display them close enough together, you get uh, the illusion of movement occurring. Uh, that's how animation and movies work. Uh, and basically the point where, at uh, the point where we can't really tell as humans that we're not looking at a bunch of still images displayed after one another, we're looking at some fluid moving thing, uh, that's around 60 frames per second. So if you're displaying something 60 frames per second, that means 60 sort of different images per second, then it's going to look like fluid movement. And we can see in this uh, uh, debugger here under frames, if we take a look at the FPS we're getting, as we scroll across, we can see, you know, we're getting sort of 6, 8, 14, 13, 1, 13, 5, 4, 8, 6. So these are really uh, slow frames per second. So at, as we're sort of scrolling this list really fast, we're not getting enough frames to actually display that fluidly. So what we could do now is we could start trying to figure out what's causing this low FPS. And so you could do this live you know, through here, through the debugger, I could come into here and say, well, I've got this weird transform thing going on. Maybe that's causing some performance issues there. So I could come into here and find where I've applied that. So I've got the transform there, so I can just turn that off now. And you'll see that take effect uh, on the device. Uh, so now it's back to a normal list, but we still have a lot of items in there now. So if I wanted to at this point, I could come back to the performance tab, we'll click that clear button, and we'll record another snapshot, and we'll see if we've improved it all. So I'll hit the record button again, I'm scrolling on the device, and then I'll hit stop on here. Okay, so we've got our snapshot again. If I highlight just a, another section again here, and we take a look at the frames again, uh, we can see we got 6, 7, 12, 6, 4, 9, 6, 8, 59. That was a, that was a good uh, frame in particular there, but still most of them are pretty slow. And it's certainly going to be noticeable and janky with uh, this low of an FPS. So as a more drastic move right now, what I'll do is I'll try just dropping this... Um, the amount of items in the list down. So rather than 2000, which is a pretty absurdly high amount, let's just go back down to, to 100. And we'll also get, we'll get rid of that transform as well. So I'll save that. And what I'm going to do now is just redeploy that to the device and then we'll try again. Okay, so that application is uh, with the changes has been redeployed to the uh, device now. So if I open up uh, the inspector again here, we'll inspect that same application and you can see now we don't have the, the transform going on by default. It's just a, a normal list now, and it's uh, much smaller. Uh, so it still is a you know, reasonably large list, but it's you know, certainly not 2,000 anymore. So uh, we'll do the same thing again. We'll go to that Performance tab, hit Record. Uh, we'll scroll a little bit again and hit Stop. And another thing I want to mention here is see the screenshots uh, little checkbox up here. You can actually tick that. And as you're recording, you'll have a, a series of screenshots on the screen, uh, which will show you what the application looks like uh, at certain points. So it's a good way to tell maybe at application startup, you can see at what point you know, something first starts displaying on the screen. I don't think it's particularly useful for this scenario, but it is something that is very useful. Okay, so let's uh, again take a little slice so we can see things a bit bigger here. And we'll take a look at you know, what sort of frames we're getting now. And you can see here we've got 23, 80, 35, 51, 70, 58, 29, 62, 67. So there are a few frames in there that are still uh, below that 60 frames per second, but the majority now are um, around 60 frames per second at least, either a bit above or a bit below that. So now this list, uh, if we scroll that, it's going to perform much more smoothly. And you can see here most of these frames are green, and they were in the other example too, actually. Uh, and if you have any uh, really long frames, some really slow frames down to like say one frame per second, 
Uh, the debugger here will actually highlight those as red. Uh, so that can be a really quick way to identify an area when you know, something is seriously going wrong if that's happening. And lists are one of those things that are really sort of, one of the biggest challenges for uh, sort of hybrid web-based applications like this, uh, displaying large lists and getting to them to scroll fluidly uh, is one really big challenge, uh, which I think Ionic has tackled really well. Uh, but for large lists, especially if you're going to include things like images, uh, using a standard list probably isn't a great idea. Um, you might want to look into uh, the virtual scroll list that uh, Ionic provides. Um, that does some kind of some DOM recycling. So rather than having, say, a thousand items loaded into the list at once, there's really only, say, um, maybe there's only 10 or 20, and those elements get recycled as you scroll through. Uh, so it makes it much easier to achieve that high FPS with a really large list. So yeah, I mostly just wanted to show you uh, an example of using uh, the remote debugger with an Android application on, a, on an Android device. And I figured it'd just be interesting to actually do something a little bit as well. So I hope this video was useful. Uh, if you want to see similar videos, uh, let me know what you'd like to see. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.